I was a living on range line then. I had got hurt, had a fractured skull, and wasn't able to nurse. How did you fracture your skull? Well, I was working at a sewing room, and, a, and I was sitting at the machine. The supervisor, I made hand buttonhole. I could make the, oh, by the hundred dozen. And I was very, very good. And I, I, we called resets at 10.30. We had resets, 10 minutes to go to the bathroom and to get a, a drink and kind of stretch her legs, you know. And uh, I always had to quilt my needle in because they'd lose my little needle. It wasn't over an inch long if it was that because I had a very tiny needle. And uh, the woman fumbled over and they had a shelf over my head and she knocked a can of grapefruit juice off of my head, one of them big ones, mm -hmm. and it hit the center of my head and knocked me unconscious. I remember when I come to, I was crying. It hurt so bad. And it's a great deep dent in my head now. Yeah, and for eight years I wasn't hardly able to do anything. I had ice caps to my head. And finally... For eight years? Uh-huh. It comes back every once in a while yet if I do too much. Mm -hmm. But in the, I went to the Marine Hospital, but the supervisor sent me there. She said that I had mental trouble, that I didn't get hurt at the sewing room. She had two women to sign that I didn't get hurt. Couldn't the doctor tell? Oh, the doctor thought I'd get, and uh, they sent me to the Chicago, to the Marine Hospital in Chicago. But you see, uh, she sent me that sh I was mental, and they couldn't do anything for my head. They had to do just what she said. And they told me while I was there, they told me uh, that it wasn't anything wrong with my mind. I could go back because my mind, my brain functioned three times where ordinary brain function once. And they said, that's why I work so hard. They said, I'd work harder than any man or woman they ever took a test from. But they said, I had so much glory in my cell, in my cell. And they said, it don't hurt you now, but it will when you get older, cause you'll be doing something. And you're just so happy of doing what you are. You see, I can get ever so tired. I'll be so I can't hardly walk and go. And I'll get out in my yard and begin doing something. And I yet get glory all over my soul. And I could yet work myself to death. I've always been that way. I never mind anything I've done. And never hated anything i ever done. So it is many people like I am at my age, at 80 year old. And every flower and everything, I told Mr. Jones down there where my husband was, he was talking about me doing so much and things. And I said, oh, I just love out of doors with my flower. I'm so happy. And I said, I love every old flower. And they have to be loved or they won't bloom, they won't do. And he said, well, he never seen anybody like me. <laughs> and I said, I look a lot to God for everything. So I mortgaged the place. My husband would go, uh, was blind. Oh, when did that happen? Well, it's, he's been blind 12 years. That happened when he was out on the dice farm. Uh-huh, he got hit in the eye and went blind. In both eyes? Uh-huh. He got hit in one eye and got blind? Uh-huh, yeah. What was he hit with? Well, with uh, the wrench. He was pulling the barbed wire back with a wrench, and the wrench flew off and hit him in the eye. And we didn't have no car then, and Mr. Dye brought him in. He worked out there 24 years, and he had went back to help him. He had retired, and he went back to help him. And the ranch hit him in the in the eye, and he brought him in and left him out at the walk to come on in. And Dad was just a hollering and a crying, and blood a running out of his eye. And he didn't offer to take him to the hospital or anything. And I got ready quick as I could and took a cab and took him to the 
emergency room over at the university hospital because he had been going over there anyway for diabetes. He had, had diabetes. He was diabetic and he had been a going for years over there and they all knowed him, you know. And they examined him and they told him that he might go blind. But Mr. Dye and his wife, they called in here every day. He had MFA insurance on the farm. Yeah. And they wanted him to pay it off and sign it. And he would, and we begged him. My daughter was a school teacher and begged him not to sign the papers, but he thought the sun rise and set in there. I don't understand. The insurance would have paid for his eyes. Why, yeah. He but why didn't he, um, why didn't he have an operation? Well, honey, he couldn't be operated on. No, his eyesight was gone. Then what good was the insurance? And they, uh, well, they had insurance on him that would pay the hospital bill. Yeah. And it was only $74. And they said that they had done all they could for his eye at that time that he might go blind and we told dad not to not, not to, to what? not to let them pay it off and him sign the paper that they had paid it oh. his bill at the hospital yeah. so that was the end of that so in three months he's stone blind 